Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we're starting the week out relatively quiet, whether it's be on the euro, which is on the back foot, or um, the dolly in, which is still holding up close to the gains. But the we are seeing the uh, the uh, equities, uh, the indices, um, looking at the Russell, uh, the NASDAQ, and the S&Ps, and they're just a little bit lower. Um, from where they were on Friday. Uh, so I'm wondering if we might be able to start to see these markets just pair back just a little bit. Uh, Dolly is still holding close to these highs, but we shall see. Also, we have the um, K, which had gone and slid. Actually, it was uh, uh, on Friday. We had the potential to go in and uh, move much higher, and then we got some UK data, and boy, it really pulled the rug out from underneath the cable, and we started going and slide from there. We'll... Um, Take a look at what we have as far as economic data. So relatively going, uh, relatively quiet um, as far as data goes. We're looking here uh, for today. Um, only thing we have uh, so far has been uh, German producer prices, and that's it. I don't see anything else here. Um, until tomorrow, so uh, it could be quiet. Um, but nonetheless, we've had such a uh, a phenomenal run in uh, equities, and we hung around there. I thought we might see a little bit of a pullback coming into Friday. I thought, matter of fact, I thought um, we would see them uh, close higher on Thursday, kind of flame out a bit uh, in the Asian session early Friday, and then spend the day come back. And uh, but nonetheless, we kind of held them there Friday, and we kind of pushed them a little bit higher and we're just a bit quieter. So we may see a, a little bit further of a, a pair back that may allow the uh, dolly in to come back a little bit. We shall see. We did go and get this slower move and we finally made it down here to the 1865 area here in the dollar peso, uh, which uh, that's a key level. You'll see that. And that's also co coincides with, I think it's 1862, which is 161% of the most recent failed rally. Uh, we did go and see the uh, Aussie pair back um, as we were not, have not been able to get a foothold of a 69.14. Remember the key level that we're looking at was 69.42, but we do have uh, quite a few shorts looking for a uh, um, pair back uh, on uh, the backdrop of a potential RBA rate cut which is prompt, being prompted by a weak consumer demand as well as the risk from the uh, Australian bushfires. Also, let's not forget the dollar index. It did close above 60, uh, 97.42, which was key. And we've since pushed beyond that. Uh, the 97.67 area, you can see right in here, is a little bit of a resistance. But the key level going forward, once again, is the old 97.89, the old weekly pivot. So we shall see. Uh, with that, let's go on and uh, take a look at a uh, couple of stories. And then we'll move on into the analysis. Australia and New Zealand dollars save stamina for data hurdles later in the week. The Australian and New Zealand dollars marked time on Monday as markets awaited key data due, earlier, uh, due later in the week, which could decide whether interest rates in both countries might be cut anytime soon. The Aussie was a fraction firmer at 68.76, bound by uh, chart support around the 68.50 area. And the Kiwi idled at 66.15. Both faced major data uh, hurdles this week with the Australian labor report due on Thursday and New Zealand consumer prices the day after. The jobs number, which could be critical for whether the RBA cuts rate is February the 4th. Um, the February 4th policy meeting, given the central bank's bo uh, board highlighted risk to employment at its December meeting. <laughs> Medium forecasts are for a net rise or a rise of 15,000 new net jobs following November's surprisingly large gain of 39,900, with unemployment staying at 5.2%. A repeat of the strong November outcome could be enough to convince the RBA that the general turn of the economy is continuing. 
it would offset some of the data pointing the other way, such as weak consumer spending in the Q3 and the recent decline in consumer confidence. Plank, however, looks for an increase in jobs of just 5,000 for December. If we couple this with the downside pressure of the RBA's economic uh, forecast from soft consumer spending, then a February rate cut is likely the result. Consumer confidence has taken a hit in recent weeks as bushfires swept through the, wrist, uh, through the east of the country and swathed major cities in harmful smoke. That has left the market split on where the RBA will go as early as February, with futures implying a chance of 46%. The three-year bond futures were at 99 and a quarter. New Zealand's uh, CPI is forecast to have risen four tenths in December, nudging annual inflation up to 1.8 from 1.5%. And well within the target range for the RBNZ. Further lifts in underlying inflation will give the RBNZ confidence that keeping the cash rate unchanged of 1% is about right. However, inflation is certainly not guaranteed to sell around 2% over the medium term. There remains hesitancy and caution among firms. And dollar firm on strong U.S. data and look hopes uh, hoist one to a six-month high. The dollar began the week on a firm note on Monday as economic data pointed to strength right across the U.S. economy while optimism on the outlook for China-supported Asian currencies. The greenback held steady to a one-week high against the euro, 1095, and just about an eight-month peak on the Japanese yen at 1017 per dollar. The Chinese won edged two tenths to a fresh six month top, while the Aussie and New Zealand dollars also edged ahead. More uh, moves were slight and volume thin as Chinese New Year approaches in Asia with US markets closed for Martin Luther King on Monday. So, once again, we could see a quiet session. You know, I just completely forgot about that. I'm thinking, boy, it sure is going to be a quiet day today. Well, yeah, because uh, holiday today. Figures on Friday showed U.S. home building surged to a 13-year high in December, with retail sales also on the rise and a gauge of manufacturing activity rebounding to its highest in eight months. The strength of the United States comes as European economic data uh, points in the opposite direction, though with possible signs of bottoming on both there and China. Well... Uh, economic data has been waiting to bottom in China and the Europe since Moses crossed the desert, so we know that. Uh, so I don't know why they keep saying it's going to bottom, it's going to bottom, and it just keeps getting worse. We saw that from the German uh, BID forecast saying that manufacturing sector is in a recession in Germany and no signs of bottoming now, so that certainly counters that. Uh, we're seeing consistent strong data still from the United States. Um, and that's on the back of a boost that we'll probably get from the U.S.-China trade agreement, said Jeffrey Halley, uh, senior market strategist for Orlando. I think the U.S. dollar will continue to outperform against major currencies, he said, adding he counted the chance of a Fed rate cut at zero. I think the bar is quite high. A rate cut is quite high at the moment. China on Friday posted its slowest annual growth figure in almost 30 years, although December data showed revived business confidence and quickening factory output. That helped the won to a six-month high after the country's benchmark lending rate was held steady on Monday. The Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollars rose about two-tenths with emerging markets also nudging ahead. They're catching a big tailwind from this trade deal, said Halley. It does imply better times ahead on the resource side, and that's why we see some strength in the Aussie. However, cost remained as investors took to Australian jobs data on Thursday for a crucial clue to the next move in Australian interest rates. The RBA meets next month, and widespread bushfires and the depressing effect on already weak consumer sentiment and to the case for further stimulus following three rate cuts this year. So with that, we're going to move into the analysis. Um, yeah, I don't know why it completely slipped my mind that uh, we do have uh, Martin Luther King today. today. So uh, holiday here in the States and hence uh, the quiet activity. And let me just go on and get the uh, bias chart out. 
So uh, with the, starting with the euro dollar, with Friday's close below 11.05, the euro has left the bulls once again at the altar. The pair remains above the trend line with support level 1078 below. This represents, this represents a challenge for the bears to break more than necessarily for the bulls to defend. And I'm talking about where we're at, because like I said, one of the things we're looking at is if we got a close below 1105, that would open the door for, you know, uh, we actually turn the market bearish. Remember, we've had it in a range. Um, but as I mentioned before, this is really about more of the bears. Let's put it this way. The opportunity for them to break. Yes, we're above the trend line. But with that close on Friday, it's really more of an opportunity for the bears to grab hold of and break to new lows as it is opposed to, as I'm stating is, the bulls to try and hold this trend line. I'm just saying it's greater in that sense because the way we finish the week, and once again, it's just like, how many times have the bulls been left at the altar? I mean, how many times can you count? It's literally almost, you know, you can't even think how many times, you know, it's been the old fool me once, fool me twice, fool me three, fool me four times, fool me five times. I'm just saying is, you know, so at this point, it's not a matter of can the bulls defend this area, 1070 at the trend line, or it's more so about can the bears blow past this, okay? So that's what I mean by there. This represents a chance, challenge for bears to take, uh, uh, to break more than for bulls to defend. A head and shoulders appears to have been carved out with a potential move to 917. Resistance to start the week is 1130. So Right now, you can see here we have a bit of a head and shoulders with the potential they could get us drive us down here to 917. We do have a ECB later in the week. We'll see. I mean, you know, honestly, who's really going to believe that this thing could rally? I guess in that situation, maybe you could rally. Look, the truth of the matter is, even if 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 uh, Lagarde were to be bearish, uh, who's really going to believe that Europe's going to turn around? I mean, let's be realistic. Who's really going to believe? I mean, it's it's basically on the backdrop of of the whole deal with the U.S., which really has nothing to do with Europe. You know what I mean? Let's be let's be clear. So, what could they benefit other than a offset benefit? You see, what I'm saying so. Um, but nonetheless, I mean the the case is made. You know, well, there might be uh, some unloading, which always a possibility if. If we were to see a pull, uh, a rather strong pullback in S and P's, then maybe the the euro being used as a funding currency could then add blah blah blah. Honestly, even if Lagarde were to give a you know, instead of such a give a real dovish stance, you give a little bit of hawkish. The truth of the matter is, for what I'm just saying is, we just you know one of the things that set the tone as we came into Friday was when, um, you know, we got that survey from uh, the BID survey out of Germany, and they said that not only was manufacturing, their manufacturing center, sector was in a uh, recession, but there was no bottom in sight. So, you know what I mean? Unless, unless uh, Lagarde turns into a full-on hawk, anything that would be, would send this thing higher would be so quickly sold into, as it has each time. The only thing they could hope for, and really that's what they're saying is like, they're not a direct benefiter of the of the the, the deal, the um, uh, phase one deal. They're just an offshoot. Well, if things get better, then blah, blah, blah. So it doesn't really directly impact them. So the only way that you could really see the euro turn around is if the S&Ps just turn around and fall on their face, essentially. So that's what they're looking at. Could you get a bounce? Yeah, I guess you can bounce if if Lagarde is surprisingly uh, a bit hawkish, but it's going to be sold into. 
because once again, the reality is, is that the European economy is pretty much in a quagmire. So, I mean, there was a, about, I think it was two years, yeah, more than two years ago. We kind of see, we saw over the course, I remember the time, it was either two years or three years ago. I think we started to see uh, uh, PMI data start to bottom like in April. And it went for about four months and it was kind of gently improving. It actually started in Germany at the time. And then we saw it uh, materialize into a rally for the euro. Once again, like I said, about three more than um, about a little bit more than three months later, as we saw data start to turn around, we're not seeing that here. I mean, at best, we're just kind of hold, you know holding at the bottom. If you think about it, and like I said, Germany's still in the woes, and uh, that's supposed to be the the engine of the European uh, area. So, just to put things in context, because obviously ECB meeting is on Thursday. What do we see if we see a turnaround, blah, blah, blah. But like I said, even if we see a turnaround, the reality is, is that the, the Eurozone economy remains weak. Um, and really, the only thing that really help will be the idea of the funding currency. And that's only going to be if the S&P comes apart. Let's be honest. It doesn't have to go to heck in a handbasket, but we would literally have to see it. But at the minimum, this market come off 50 to 75 handles at the minimum to go and get this thing to try and turn around coupled with the whole funding currency and the whole bit to try and get this market to move higher. Hence why I'm saying uh, we're above support, but we did close above 1105. So once again, the bulls have been left at the altar. So if you're bullish, and I'm just saying if you're bullish and you, you got long in from up in here and you're hanging, are you going to come, are you going to turn around and say, well, I can't, I can't wait to buy again. No, you're going to say enough of this. I'm, I'm not going to be fooled again. Hence my thought, which is, although we're above and we're just at the trend line, the opportunity is more about not the bulls defending, but the opportunity for the bears to break it lower. Doesn't mean they necessarily will, but the percentages or the opportunity is there for the bears to take. So starting out the, the week here on Monday, it's going to be relatively quiet. Uh, support comes in is going to be right there, 1056, 1056. And resistance will be the 1130 if they can try and turn things around. And this has finally gone bearish. Let me just pull up from right here, I guess. So the Asian session update. KL finished the prior week on the defensive, albeit remaining above the pivot. You can see it right there. We actually were right at it, 2980. Uh, and we're actually just below it, 2068. Um, bears, base, uh, bears need to do two consecutive closes below 2980 to regain full control. Support comes in at 2936, with additional support at 2898. Resistance is 3077. Two daily closes above that to uh, 3077 would negate the near short term negative pull. Well, we had an opportunity to really turn things around here in the cable. It certainly looked like it early in the session on Friday. Uh, had we gotten a weekly close above 3082, boy, and that really would have ignited things. But that poor UK data came in, and boy, it really just took the win out of the sales and certainly we find ourselves on the defensive. Same situation, boy, the bulls had it right there. Um, and uh, the bears snatched it, snatched victory uh, right out of the mouth of the bulls uh, with that. So um, 29.36 for support today. And resistance. Take all I can. Right there, thirty forty six, thirty forty six for resistance. And that may even see it seem a bit 
out there. The bus is still bullish on the cable for right now. Um, things can change, but uh, for right now it is. So the Aussie finished the week on its lows, unable to positively benefit from the phase one signing. Shorts have placed a heavy bet since the prior week in anticipation of an RBA rate cut in the early February. On the backdrop of weakening consumer de demand, of weakening consumer confidence, coupled with the bushfires. A close below 68.48 opens a challenge to 67.48, which supported 68.08. Resistance comes in at 69.04. So you can see the 68.48 there in the pink line. Um, a close below that's going to open this door for this market to move higher. Will actually be potentially even, you know, not at that time. It's right at 68.48, but potentially we can break right below this trend line. That would send this market sinking. Um, but we'd be looking initially for 67.48 if we close below 68.48. You can see the 69.14 area there. Uh, we made a couple of stabs, but it, we still have not been able to take it out. And resistance will come in right there at 69.04. You can see the bodies coming in right there. This will be 69.04. Uh, we're only kind of giving it the benefit of the doubt because it's above the trend line and we're still above 68.48. So we'll give it the benefit of the doubt, but it's not looking good here. I don't want to say it's a range yet because we did come here and we held. So we'd have to stay here for a while to say it was a range. So we'll give it the benefit of the doubt for the being bullish because we did break above the range and still above the trend line and still above that. Kiwi has struggled the past week after a strong bull run the prior three weeks. Support comes in at 65.72. You can see it right there in that little trend line. Um, followed by 65.44, the 38, uh, well, 65.43, which is this lower area here. Right there, you see here, there's a 65.43, which is confluence with the 65.44. The initial support is going to come here at 65.72. Let's go back in here. So once again, the Kiwis struggled the past week after a strong bull run. The prior three weeks, you can see this fabulous run that we had. Support comes in at 65.72, followed by 65.43, confluence with 65.44. The 38% of this entire run of 62.201 to 67.56. Resistance is going to be 66.62. A daily close above 66.91 generates a new upside leg. So we're trading in a pretty tight range here in the Kiwi. So once again, uh, let's see here. Well, the coverage on the cat is simple and sweet, or short and sweet, however you want to look at it. The dollar cat is simply marking time just above the support level of 3021. Absent of momentum. Resistance is 3094 with support at 
29.89. We're not going anywhere. You can see here, we're just as dead as a doornail here. I mean, there's been no range. And if you think about all the activity we had in indices and the gold market, crude oil market, and we're just freaking dead in the water. So obviously no movement. 2089, 3094. Let's go into the peso. The dollar peso has reached its target of 1865 with additional support at 1862. We've been looking for this market to get to that 1865. It's continuing to drip, drip. Kind of making a stand a little bit here. Um, and equities are kind of just pausing a bit, although today is a holiday here in the States. Um, if U.S. equities take a, a pause, a short covering rebound would be in order to 1905 for starters. Two consecutive closes below 1865 targets 1844 in what's already an oversold environment. Obviously, you can see that. And remember how quiet we were trading last week. I mean, it was just gravestone trading last week. Uh, but we could have broken lower considering that equities keep on, kept on pushing new highs. I would expect a little bit of a pause here in equities. Uh, makes some sense. We shall see. Uh, and if we do get that that uh, uh, pullback and I expect it doesn't have to be anything large but because we were already defending this area even though equities were still going higher we were just kind of like holding our own here we finally broke a little bit lower on Friday well if we go and hold here we have a chance for a rebound uh, we are right now at 1867 initial resistance right now would come in right there 1880 right there Move it here for 62. And let's go move into the dolly in. So the dolly in finished the week above 110, with the resistance level 1050 ahead. The pair should be higher in light of U.S. equities. If we receive a minor pullback in equities, this should allow the pair to revisit the 927 with a pause at 964. But once again, that's a pretty decent little, I wouldn't say huge, but a reasonably pretty decent rebound. We can actually, let's take a look here. So at 3320, even a move here to 3275, which is not any small feat. It's actually would come in right there. You see there 3260? That would not even be asking for much, you know, in the uh, S&Ps. I'm just saying it'd be even reasonable. You know what I mean? So a 60 handle drop, uh, even one just to right there, uh, you went to 3287 right there. Would allow the mar would allow the dollar yen to pair back easily to the 964 area here. Uh, and then to move down here to about, as I mentioned, probably about to 3260. Should allow us to a uh, move back to 927. So that's what I'm saying. We've had a phenomenal run, and really when you look at this, the dollar yen should be uh, we've had this discussion before, but when you look where the dot where the S and P's continue to mount and mount, this market should be well over one thirteen at this point.
So that's what I'm saying. So it wouldn't take much to pull us back. Not that this thing's going to turn on collapse. I mean, like I said, the S&Ps are still in a very good situation. So even if they pull back, they're going to buy a move back to 3260. We could pull back a little bit further, you know, probably down to about 3240. Then people probably step in and try and buy that thing again because of the momentum. But just about, like I said, a 50 handle pullback would allow this market to visit the 927 with 964 for starters. Um, on a very, very short term basis, um, our support right now is going to be 985. And I guess we'll leave this here still, 1034.50. So the dollar index broke the downtrend line. You can clearly see that there. And closed above 97.42. Key resistance remains 97.89. You can see the pivot, that weekly pivot. But bulls have rested control from the bears. The bears would require two consecutive closes below 97.13. Remember that was support last week to regain the mantle of control. Resistance beyond 97.89 would be 98.11. Immediate support is 97.29. So obviously the resistance is going to be here at the pivot and support is going to be the 97.42. I will move it just a bit lower. Let's go right there. 97, let's call it 97.33. And it's now bullish. With that, we're going to move into the uh, cross rates. The Kiwi Yen took a pause on Friday to finish mildly positive for the week. The pair needs to close above 73.10 to generate an additional upside move. Initial support is 72.43, followed by solid demand at 72 even. You can see the 72 key level there. Two consecutive closes below that 72 would target 71 cents. But we're still holding pretty good. Um, after the strong run, and we're still looking fairly well. Mark's even trying to make the stand here. As I mentioned here, we do need that close above 73 of uh, 73 of five. Uh, I mean 7310. So that's going to be our resistance of 7310. And you can see initial support is 7243. See that right there? Coming across there. 7243. Still bullish. Moving on to the Euro Yen. The Euro Yen paired back strongly. To close the week, placing the pair on the defensive to start the week. Support comes in at 21.95, followed by 21.35. You can see right here. See, that's important right there. 21.95, followed by 21.35 down here. 
Two consecutive closes below 20 and 135, which would be down there. Two consecutive closes. We're trying to pair then bearish because we'd lose this whole area here. So we'd go now to move this to bearish. Resistance is 2264. You can see this key level. They have a tough time getting there. But I tell you what, we'll tighten it up for today. That's key when we lost that. So let's go with 22. There we go. 2238 for resistance. Consider we're on the defensive. And as we noted here, support comes in at 2195, about 20 pips lower. Still bullish though. Euro odd finished the week stagnant, lacking momentum. A battle of which currency is weaker? Resistance is 61.75, with support at 61.03. A daily close on either side should allow stops to carry for an additional 75 pips, but you can see we're just so quiet. I mean, it's a battle of which one's weaker. Euro says, I'm weaker. Aussie says, no, I'm weaker. So, um, uh, you can see here, essentially, it's basically been limited uh, to that when you look at it. It's out rather obvious, but I'm just saying it's a tug and pull affair at this point. I'm just saying neither one has control. So um, as I mentioned, the resistance is gonna be 61.75 with support at And with that, we'll go to the Euro Kiwi. The Euro Kiwi finished the week uh, sub 68 cents, unable to secure a foothold above the 69 area earlier in the week. The pair has retreated to a tight volume zone, which is 67.33 to 68.03. A daily close above 67.04 sends a pair to uh, 65.94. And I guess the daily close actually meant the daily close, yeah, below 67.04, sending the pair to 65.94, which would be the 78%. But we're in this tight range here. You see that? So we tried to break up here, try to get above that 69 cents early in the week. We couldn't do it. And now we've dropped into this real tight volume zone here. Um, right now, resistance is going to be right there, the break above there, which would put us right, let's call it And support right there. It's called 6707. We had it. Uh, it's going to be 6707. It's going to be key for support. And there we go. But you can see this tight zone they've got here, all this volume running here. So we kind of had a chance to break above 69, and all we did was just roll back down the hill and we're back in the quagmire zone. Let's go and move into the RCN.
This pair is trading in a quiet range, oblivious to the up move in equities. Remember when uh, you could basically trade this as a proxy for the S&Ps? Those days are long gone. Um, resistance remains 76.19. You can see that right here. A daily close above would allow a challenge of 77 cents. Support comes in at 75.50. We're not that far away, about 19 pips away. With a close below allowing a move to 74.92. So if we get that close lower, then we'll come back down to this trend. If we lose that 75.50 on a daily close. And 76.19 as resistance. With that, we'll go and move into the guppy. The guppy slid back on Friday after taking out the week's buy stops. Boy, did we nice. Do you see that here? How we jumped up on Friday, took out the stops above the week, and then we turned around and slid right back down the hill. Remember, the starting was doing pretty well. And actually, if you look on the cable, boy, we had we were right there at the cusp at 30.82. And we had the opportunity to really send this market higher. And I'm talking about the cable itself. Uh, and certainly you were seeing that across all the sterling pairs. You see here that we took out the we stops on the upside and then we slid back, putting um, the newfound bulls on the defensive and we've since followed through a little bit further. But as I said, it slid back on Friday, taking out the week's buy stops to move. It set itself to a downside test of 42.67 with additional support at 42 and a quarter. Resistance is going to be the 43.81. And as we noted, 42.67, which is we're 20 pips away. Still remains bullish. And we'll finish up with the starting odd. The sterling odd pulled back from resistance level 89.75, but close a week above the 88.85. We're actually below that now. Uh, the pair remains bullish. We're supported 88.40. A close above 87.90 would turn the pair bearish, allowing a, change of, uh, allowing a challenge of 86.86. But for right now, support comes in at 88.40. And resistance. Gonna come in right there. Eighty-nine fifteen. That also coincides with this low right here. So it'll be eighty-nine fifteen versus resistance. Obviously, still bullish. And we're going to go back to the majors. You can see here we've already broken to a little bit lower here on the euro. As I mentioned, this is really more about when you're looking at the euro is really more about the uh, the bears uh, 
with an opportunity to break this market lower. We are above the trend line. But like I said, losing that 11.05 was like the last bastion of support. It was the Alamo stand. You see right there? Right there. That, that was it right there when we lost that. We'll highlight that a little bit. You see right there. That was it. That was that was the last you know bit there. You know, I mean, we've, we closed the week. We broke to new lows on a closing basis. I mean, and you basically took the last <clears throat> bit of breath from bulls at that point. And um, you know, the prior week before it looked like we had a potential to move back above and make a case about this one twelve. Remember, we failed here at the thirty eight percent. And look like, oh, they'll be picking it up on dips. And we just broke lower. We rebounded, which wasn't, that wasn't good when we dropped this far. But that was, but you can see, this is where we, you can see this where the market closed, 11.05. Uh, we finished the day here, 11.05. And then obviously we moved higher. That's why 11.05 was so critical. So once you lost that, that was it. I mean, if you're a well, bull, from a technical standpoint, you basically just had to throw in the towel. Now, someone might make the case, yeah, but we're holding. But who has the better hand right now? If you were going to bet on which horse, who would you be betting on? You'd be betting on the Bears. So I'm saying it's up to the Bears, but they have the opportunity to break this further. Now there's a case, oh, the ECB, maybe, you know, Lagarde is going to jump out of her, her if you want to call it her dove suit. She's going to jump into a hawk suit, I guess, if – you're going to hope against hope or something like that. And, and then on top of that, maybe the spoos are going to pull back. And then maybe all of a sudden the economy is going to – a lot of ifs there, folks. So even if Lagarde is not that uh, uh, dovish, they're going to sell into this rally because the reality is reality and the economy is really in a poor state, especially when the engine of the Eurozone is, is you know, like I said, Germany's in, in a bad way. So that's what I'm saying. It would take a uh, a combination of different things to turn this market around. So really, you'd be just looking at, okay, maybe we'll see some short covering. Realistically, that's what you'd be looking for. Maybe I can see some short covering. That's about it. Because you'd need to see a combination of the spoo sell-off. You'd have to also you'd have to see Lagarde give a hawkish tilt. Then you'd have to see some surprising economic numbers. It'd take all three of those things to actually get the, the euro, you know, moving higher and significantly higher, you have to see, you have to see the spoos come apart. And do you see anything on the horizon that suggests the spoos are going to come apart? No. Could we see a good correction? Yeah, certainly we could see if we go and take a pause here, but they're going to buy that correction because like you can see here, any pullback to 3260, which would be 60 handles, is going to be viewed right there as a buying opportunity. Yeah, maybe we can push a little bit lower, but I'm just saying is, any rally in the, in the euro is going to be considered a selling opportunity, especially after how many times this is full people. And you do have the potential here for a little bit of a head and shoulders here. So really the ball's in the bear's court. Whether they take advantage of not, uh, that's going to be up to them. Certainly the dollar index got above that 97.02. They've negated the downside. I'm not saying it's a full-on uh, full bull move because it's not. If it was a full-on bull, bull move, we would need to get above 97.89 which is this key pivot. But with this break above 97.82 and the trend line, we've negated the downside. Doesn't mean it's wildly bullish, but just like the same token, the, the bears for the euro have the opportunity to make us some hay. Same thing here with the bulls. If they can get above 97.89, yeah, it's a full on buy then. If we get above 97.89, especially two consecutive closes, but one, second, one close above 97.89 really pretty much puts the bulls now in the driver's seat. But we are, the bulls now have it. I mean, as much as we were respecting the downtrend line, the same thing we were respecting when the euro broke it and we kept it, giving it the benefit of that with the bullish. There's no denying this, folks. We've been bumping against this 97.82 all week long, and we finally not only broke that, we broke the downtrend line. Bulls now have control. It is bullish now. What the bulls do with it now, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, time will tell. That's all we have. Thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar. We'll see you in the chat room.